This is a Hot Pie Media Original. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Eric Corum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Michael Steiner. Dr. Steiner holds a PhD in organizational psychology and serves as the chief of staff at Southeastern University. Dr. Steiner is an expert on leveraging social networks and onboarding new hires, and he frequently guests lectures on team dynamics and strategy building. Today, we discuss why leaders need to kill their inner Superman or Superwoman to awaken the potential of their team. But before we get into this discussion, if you are a frequent listener of The Blueprint, would you please take a moment to leave us a comment and a review in the Apple Podcast app, as this is one of the best ways that you can help support the podcast. But now, it's time to lean in and learn from the best. Michael, I've heard you say it before that if you're the best person on your team, that you're actually making your team worse. And another way of saying this, I guess, is if all the knowledge resides in your head, you aren't helping anyone to grow. Essentially, you have to kill your superpower. Mm -hmm. So how do we move from being the leader to being the coach? Yep. Yep. How do we move from being the leader to being the coach? Well, it all gets down into, again, it's, 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 it's your purpose, right? What are you doing here? What are we doing here? And where I see most people struggle, especially when they make the jump from being a top producer, right? Being a top thing to being in those leadership roles where they misstep is they don't, is they don't realize that they're not winning anymore by what they produce. They're winning by what their group produces, right? And so all of us exist in a web of connections. We exist within a web of, of, a, of a network. And the more we contribute to that network, you get an exponential return on that. And so um, when leaders get put in charge, they still are in that same mindset of, I have to be the best. I have to want to grow. I have to be the one that performs. And so when your team underperforms, what do you do? You start doing their job for them. You start doing things for them and you don't let them make the mistakes. You don't let them grow in there and you don't ask the right questions to awake their potential. So what happens is this phenomenon called social loafing, right? This is why everybody hates working on group projects because what happens is that 20% do the work and the other 80% sit by. But it's not because the other 80% are incompetent or lazy. It's because you haven't awakened their potential. Your job as a leader is to awaken the potential of the people around you sounds awesome in, in theory. How do you do that? Super simple. Ask better questions. You got to get good at asking questions. You got to get good at taking time with your team, giving them enough time to accomplish things. Sure, you could crank out a 20-page awesome presentation the night before on a coffee binge, right? Because you're the best producer of all time. But you can create an infinitely better presentation if you give your team enough time to think about it, grow through it, set some parameters, and ask the better questions along the way to cultivate it. High performance isn't just for elite athletes or billionaires with unlimited funds. In my newsletter adaptation, I provide you with simple and efficient high performance tools and resources you can use to unlock your potential. And when you sign up, I'll give you my free ultimate sleep cheat sheet, a simple guide to optimizing your sleep. So sign up now at www.ericcorum.com. Now, Back to the show. Wow. You're telling me that we can improve our work output and how our teams grow by asking better questions. So what types of questions should you be asking? Yeah. So, you know, things like the, the, the critical parts, right, where leaders get uh, tripped up the most is when somebody makes a mistake right? Mm -hmm. Or is about to make a mistake or has made a mistake. So that's is it the because moment. you get kind of angry or you get like, there's emotion enters the equation. Yeah. Emotions enter the equation. You know, all the autonomic things start triggering, right? Fear. You're going to lose all this stuff. Most of us are in middle management. So we have to report to somebody who may get mm -hmm. angry at it. You know, the whole, the whole chain of things, then you start bringing in your past trauma. You start, right. So this one person didn't uh, hit the deadline for whatever reason. And all of a sudden the entire weight of your life comes to bear on this one situation. And the thing that you keep hearing in your head is if I had just done it myself, I could have gotten it. I could have, we could have accomplished this goal. The problem is, is you're missing out on a huge opportunity for that person to grow. And so it's a very simple question. You just lean into and say, help me understand what happened. Mm. And you take a step back and you pause. Let them talk. Let them ask about it. Then you ask things, simple follow-up questions. 
What did you think about this? What if we could have done that? How could we have done this better? How will we do this better on the forward? And, and the big thing is to not step into that advice monster. This is a great book, um, The Coaching Habit by Michael Bungay Steiner, walks through literally a seven question framework that you can use for anybody. But the middle question, the biggest question, he literally calls it the awe question, is called, and what else? Right? So many of us take the first answer that people give and then we just run with it, right? It's still that Superman. We're, we're, we're faking it till we make it. And what else allows them to enter that space, think creatively, give them enough time to think. And that's the, that's the one that you have in your back pocket. And what else? Tell me what happened and what else? How are we going to fix that? And what else? Those are the spaces that you give for people to grow and expound in their capacity. And what always happens is people love you for it. They mm. love you for it. This is the biggest way to create trust and loyalty with your team because nobody is treating each other like this. No. Again, when this person makes a mistake, when they realize they're caught, they're not just thinking about the job moment. They've got their entire life of making mistakes. They have what their dad yelled at them or what their teacher <laughs> yelled at them or what their coach yelled at them. They're literally trembling in their boots to tell you about this mistake that they made. And you have an opportunity to say, hey, you are not defined by this mistake and you can grow in your capacity as a team. And in fact, when you grow in your capacity, we as a team grow in your capacity. And I'm committed to calling that out for, from you. No, that's really great. Because I think a lot of times people are fearful to tell their superior that they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you hide mistakes, things always get worse. It's like your kids, right? you know, they mm -hmm. screw up and they don't want to tell you. And then the things, everything gets worse. And it's, not that like you can't grow unless you make mistakes. Right. And those, those mistakes are often the thing that allow your organization to, to grow exponentially because you go, Hey, this is the area that we need to avoid. Mm -hmm. Not to point so-and-so out, but like, look, this is what we learned. Right. This is how it's going to help us in the future. And you can avoid those landmines later. Um, but well, the only the way you can with... go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, it's the same thing with your children, right? Like mm -hmm. this is the same kind of parenting hack. And I'm finding this out with my kids all the time. Like, my, my, uh, my three-year-old, right? She loves putting her own clothes on. It takes forever. It's like the <laughs> most thing we're stressed. We need to go to, we need to go to, to church. And in my head, I think I'm being helpful by saying, Hey, let me, let me put your pants on for you. Let me get, you know, we're late and I'm just going to be helpful. I'm going to do this for her, but I'm robbing her of an opportunity to develop her, her hand-eye coordination. I'm robbing her of an opportunity to develop physically because I'm in a rush and I don't want to give her that space. It's the same thing with your team. It's the same thing with anybody. You have to give people the space to improve and, and time. And that may mean, here's the deep, dark secret. That may mean that you don't do as many things. Mm. So that's, that's what often happens is that urgency is the enemy of coaching. When everything is urgent, when everything is crisis level, we have to do this right now. You can't develop people because it doesn't give you enough time. So as leaders, we have to give ourselves enough time. And if that means that we do less things, but the things that we do are of better quality and of higher capacity, our organizations are going to be better off for it. Wow. That is, I just wrote that down. Urgency mm -hmm. is the enemy of coaching. That is phenomenal. Michael, um, if people want to find you, uh, the best place is what? Instagram and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok. Whichever one is your, is your pleasure on there. Dr. Michael Steiner. That's the handle on that one. All right, we'll put that in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Love our time together. If you found today's podcast valuable, would you please share it with a friend who's either leading a team or considering making a change in their career? As I'm confident this will help them in their decision-making process. Thanks again for listening and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.